So Steph, why do we need a Raman spectrometer to measure alcohol? Uh, a good example would be in 2012, the Czech Republic had to temporarily ban the sale of hard liquor because people actually died due to the consumption of methanol-laced spirits. So authorities had to turn to Raman spectroscopy as a screening tool for the identification and quantification of methanol in these contaminated spirits. Wow, that's some scary stuff. So what's the benefits of using Raman spectroscopy for these screening processes? Uh, there's three major benefits. The first one is that Raman analysis is fast. So in the example of the Czech Republic, they had to quickly measure the alcohol, which could potentially save lives. And the second benefit is that it's really easy to take a measurement. So we can use this probe here to measure right through the bottle, and then you don't even have to come in contact with the substance that you're trying to measure. And the third benefit is that Raman spectroscopy is insensitive to the interference of water. So it's perfect for this application. Oh, it's awesome. So let's give it a shot. I see what you did there. And see what kind of results we get. Okay. So first we're gonna take a dark scan with the shutter closed. And we'll go into the software so that we can go ahead and subtract that later when we take our actual scan. And now we can take our scan of the alcohol. When measuring the quantification, we can actually measure down to a few tenths of a percent. And based on this, you can see that our rum is safe and methanol free. That's an interesting use for Raman spectroscopy. Vegetable oils are gaining importance um, because of their high content of those mono and polyunsaturated acids, mm -hmm. especially in comparison to like animal fats for mm -hmm. cooking, things like that. And then also for quality control, we want to determine that the concentrations of the different components are what they're supposed to be, what's being advertised to us. Okay. So for example, with extra virgin olive oil, you pay a lot of money for good olive oil, so you want to make sure that you're getting your money's worth. Exactly. So let's go ahead and um, take a couple of scans of the different kind of oils that we have here. So we'll take a dark scan first, uh, make sure that the shutter's closed, and we'll go into BW spec here and take the dark scan. Okay, and then we can grab the olive oil there and take a scan of that as well. Okay, and then we'll take a scan of the next one. And we don't need to take dark scans in between because the integration time is the same. Mm -hmm. And it also works out that ramen can measure through the plastic or the glass bottles, yep. so it's really easy to do. Okay, and as you can see, the three spectra are overlaid here, and they're very similar because they're all vegetable oils, mm -hmm. but they're a little bit different because each one has a little bit different concentration than the others mm -hmm. of the different ingredients that we talked about. Mm -hmm. So basically through this, we can tell that the olive oil that you bought in the store is what it's supposed to be. So for today's experiment, we will be using our Ironman Plus portable ramen system with a 785 nanometer laser excitation to monitor the hydrolysis of acetic anhydride. The hydrolysis process converts the acetic anhydride to acetic acid via nucleophilic carbonyl substitution. The Ironman Plus is a portable, compact, and lightweight ramen system that is equipped with a TE-cooled back-thin CCD detector, allowing for high sensitivity. The laser utilizes our patented clean laser technology that allows for extremely narrow bandwidth and high power output around 300 milliwatts at an affordable price. The unique optical design of the Iron Plus spectrometer provides spectral resolution of around 3.5 wave numbers across the spectral range of 65 to 3200 wave numbers. The Iron Plus comes standard with a fiber optic probe allowing great flexibility at the sampling interface but also has the ability to couple with other accessories. In this setup, we are using a three-neck round-bottom flask, allowing for temperature monitoring, a relief valve for pressure stabilization, and our fiber optic probe coupled to our immersion shaft, allowing for in-situ measurements. Raman technology can be used to monitor the change of the Raman bands of acetic anhydride as it is consumed, while simultaneously observing the growth of the Raman bands associated with acetic acid during the reaction process. This is the Raman spectra of pure acetic anhydride, Note the Raman bands between 200 and 2,000 wave numbers. This is the Raman spectra of pure acetic acid. Note the Raman bands between 400 and 2,000 wave numbers. As you can see, after conducting the reaction, there is a clear spectral shift from acetic anhydride to acetic acid. 
Note the anhydride bands between 17 to 1900 wave numbers have completely diminished, while the strong 898 wave number peak from acetic acid has formed.